Hello, I'm Seema and welcome to part 20 of the chapter Equilibrium. Moving ahead with our discussion of the factors affecting equilibria, in the previous two videos I told you about uh, the effect of concentration on equilibria. In this video, I'm going to tell you about the effect of pressure and the effect of inert gas on equilibria. Let us start with the effect of pressure. As we had studied earlier when we did the states of uh, matter, I told you that the effect of pressure on a gas is observable, but the effect of uh, pressure on a liquid or a solid cannot be observed. Let me take this example and explain this to you again. Do you remember we took this flask and I told you that if we have a gas in this flask and there's a piston inside the flask and I push the piston downwards and bring it to half and there's a gas present in it, the piston can be pushed inwards and if the volume was one liter, it can be brought down to half a liter. And what does that do? It pushes the molecules of gas together and they come closer and therefore the pressure of the molecules of gas and what is the pressure? It is the pressure is the hitting of the walls by the molecules of the gas. So when the number of molecules per unit volume has doubled, the pressure with which it hits the walls also doubles. So when the volume becomes half, the pressure becomes double. This happens if you have a gas inside the flask. But now if I had, let us say, liquid inside the flask, which was filled up to one liter, could I have pushed the piston down? I could because a liquid has a surface and when you put something over the surface, it cannot push. It may go into it because the liquid molecules will displace and allow it to go inside, but the liquid will not be compressed. The same thing happens when there's a solid inside the flask. If you have a solid, the piston cannot push the solid down. So a volume change cannot be brought about in the case of a liquid or a solid. It can only be brought about in the case of a gas. So why am I talking of volume? Because volume is related to pressure according to Boyle's law. We did in the gaseous state, the pressure is inversely proportional to volume. That is, as you increase the pressure, the volume goes down. And if the volume increases, the pressure goes down. It is vice versa. They are inversely proportional to each other. You noticed when I brought the volume to half, the number of molecules present in that per unit volume, it got doubled. That is, the concentration became double. And therefore, the number of molecules hitting the walls of the container also doubled and hence the pressure doubled up. So they are inversely proportional with each other. So this is how we bring about a change in pressure by changing the volume of the vessel in which a chemical reaction or a chemical equilibrium has been established. And that is how we study the effect of pressure on equilibria. Pressure change obtained by volume change. How do you obtain the pressure change? We obtain it by changing the volume. So pressure change obtained by volume change when the number of moles of gaseous reactants and products are different, only then it affects the equilibrium. I've just, I've not written a complete sentence, just try to uh, condense it a little. But what it means is that when we change the pressure, the equilibrium will be affected only if the number of gaseous reactants and products are different. What is the logic behind it? Why would the equilibrium be changed only when the number of moles of reactants and products are different? Because we know according to ideal gases, equal moles of all gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure they contain equal num equal volume or we say equal volumes of all gases contain the same number of moles at the same temperature and pressure. So which is the Avogadro's constant also you remember the number. So the, according to this concept if you have the, a difference in the number of moles when you change the pressure the effect of that change will be different on the reactant side and it will be different on the product side. So there will be an imbalance. That is when the equilibrium will be disturbed. If the number of moles was equal of gaseous reactants and products, remember this is applicable only when you have gaseous reactants and products. Why? Because solids and liquids have no effect of change of pressure because their volume is not going to change. 
so this is applicable only when you have this a different number of moles of reactants and products gaseous reactants and products at that time the equilibrium will be disturbed to understand this better let us take this one example we have this or, or before that let me just read this sentence also according to the Lee Chatelier principle it is this the Lee Chatelier's principle is applicable only to heterogeneous equilibria for gaseous reactants and products as the pressure and volume change can only take place in gaseous reactants and products and solids and liquids are incompressible therefore whatever solid or liquid reactant or product is present in a heterogeneous equilibrium you will ignore it or it will not there will be no effect of pressure on those although it will affect the equilibrium and therefore they may react differently but as such there is no effect of pressure on change of pressure on there so now coming to this example we have all gaseous reactants and products we have carbon monoxide reacting with hydrogen to give you methane and water all gases but there's a difference in the number of moles you have one mole of carbon monoxide three moles of hydrogen which means we have four moles of reactants gaseous reactants and we have only two moles of gaseous products and we know that equal moles of all gases contain equal uh, occupy equal volume under the same conditions of temperature and pressure and the reaction is taking place at a certain temperature and pressure therefore if these are the number of moles carbon monoxide if it is one volume let us say 22.4 liters if it is one mole at stp then hydrogen should occupy 22.4 into three liters it should be three times that volume why because it has three moles so you have four volumes of this whatever the volume is four times of that volume but in the product side you have only two of those volumes right so you have only two volumes there is a difference in the volume in the reactant side and the product side as it is and now when you increase the pressure you push the piston down for such a reaction mixture it will have a different impact on the reactants and it will have a different impact on the products so if you if i just read this part out also if volume is reduced to half then pressure is doubled although i have explained this to you pressure is doubled so partial pressure of each gas and so the concentration of each gas would also be changed understand this if i had one mole of carbon monoxide in this one liter of the vessel and then i brought the piston down to half a liter like it like the volume has been reduced to half the pressure went up it got doubled so the partial pressure of just carbon monoxide in this entire mixture it has got doubled but i had three moles of hydrogen in one liter right initially the volume of the solution was one liter and i had three moles of it so three volumes was being occupied by hydrogen when i press it down to half the pressure would become three into two that is six it would increase six times so the partial pressure and therefore the concentration also is changed according to this stoichiometry if pressure increases if now the pressure increases the equilibrium shifts in the forward direction for this reaction if you increase the pressure that is if you reduce the volume the reaction proceeds in the forward direction and the equilibrium shifts in the forward direction where the number of moles decreases the number of moles in the products is less and the number of moles in the reactants is more so increase the increase of pressure has greater impact on the reactant side on the product side you have only two volumes the two volumes when they got reduced to half the pressure it only this got doubled this got doubled two into two which is only four but here it was the pressure it was two into uh, two plus three into two that is six let us understand in terms of concentration the if there was carbon monoxide if you had one mole in one liter now that one mole carbon monoxide is present in only half a liter of the vessel and therefore the pressure has been doubled but in this case in the case of hydrogen there were three moles occupying one 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 liter 
and when you reduce it to half these three moles will have their it will have there are the impact is on four volumes while on the right hand side the impact or the change in concentration is of three uh, is of only two volumes because you have one mole of this and one mole of this you can understand this better if we take the uh, the concept of qc and kc what would be equilibrium constant for this equilibrium equilibrium constant kc would be the concentrations of the products divided by concentration of the reactants raised by their stoichiometric coefficients so the stoichiometric coefficients are uh, for hydrogen is 3 and the rest are all 1 so kc is the concentration of methane into concentration of water upon the concentration of carbon monoxide into concentration of hydrogen raised to the power of 3 this is the concentration at equilibrium and you reduce the volume to half when you reduce the volume to half this the concentration of each concentration is doubled how because now that if there was one mole occupying one liter then now in half a liter there is one mole so actually the concentration has gone up by two so the concentration has actually doubled so if the concentration now when we bring about this change now the concentrations have changed the equilibrium has been disturbed and let us now calculate qc when you calculate qc under these new conditions where the volume has been decreased by uh, half or now the volume is just half of what, what was there but all concentrations will have to be multiplied by two so you have one concentration of methane multiplied by two one of water multiplied by two one of carbon monoxide multiplied by two but there are three concentrations of hydrogen multiplied by two and they have to be raised to the power of three which means that now the numerator is four times of what it was but the denominator is 16 times of what it was because of the difference in the number of moles or the denominator is bigger than the numerator which means qc is actually much much smaller than kc right it is smaller than kc and since QC is less than KC, we had studied earlier in the chapter that whenever QC is less than KC, the reaction proceeds in the forward direction. So you can understand this in terms of QC and KC also. Similarly, let us take another example here. You have carbon, which is solid. Carbon dioxide, it reacting with carbon dioxide, which is gaseous, giving you two moles of carbon monoxide gas. Now, we know that this is a heterogeneous equilibrium and in heterogeneous equilibria the effect of pressure is not there in the case of a solid so we will ignore the carbon we have one mole of gaseous reactant and we have two moles of gaseous product it is the opposite of this here we had more moles in the reactant side and less moles on the product side so what happened when we increased the uh, pressure the impact the pressure by decreasing the volume the impact on the reactant side was felt more and therefore the reaction proceeded in that direction which uses up the reactant and that is in the forward direction in this case when you increase the pressure or you decrease the volume the impact felt by the product will be more because the number of moles of the gaseous product is more as a result of which the reaction will proceed in the backward direction to do nullify the effect of the uh, of the change brought about that is what leach atlas principle is that whenever there is a disturbance in equilibrium due to any change the equilibrium shifts in a direction in order to re-establish equilibrium by nullifying the effect of that change that was brought about so in this case by increasing the pressure and by decreasing the volume you have impacted the effect the effect on products is more so the reaction proceeds in that direction that uses up the products which is the backward direction so on increase of pressure reaction proceeds in the backward direction as the number of moles of the gas in the case of here the gaseous product it increases and the impact is more on this side and you can again try it with the QC and KC concept. In this case, you will have uh, CO to the power of 2 in the numerator and CO2 in the denominator. And therefore, when you, that is KC and what would QC be? Yeah. 
Here, in this case, the value of Kc would be equal to Co to the power of 2 divided by CO2 to the power of 1. And what would QC be? 2 into CO to the power of all to the power of 2 upon CO2. So here QC would be greater than KC and therefore reaction would proceed in the backward direction. So now let us move on to the next that is the effect of inert gas on uh, equilibrium. Give me just a moment because I'll write down the topic and then I'll explain it to you. So let us now understand what happens when you add an inert gas to the reaction mixture which is already established at equilibrium. We just now understood that the effect of pressure is only seen in the case of reactants that is gaseous reactants and products. And if you are adding an inert gas, it should affect that equilibrium. What are inert gases? Inert gases are those gases that themselves do not participate in a chemical reaction. Now, the inert gases that we know, they are the noble gases. They occupy the 18th group of the periodic table. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. And these gases, they, they do not react. They, that's why they are called inert. So when you add an inert gas to the reaction mixture and if you add it and the volume is kept constant, there is no change in the pressure. When there is no change in pressure of the reactant and product, even if you added an additional gas which itself is not participating in the reaction, there would be no effect on the equilibrium. Why? Because the effect of on the equilibrium is seen only when the partial pressures of the reactants or the products in the reaction they undergo a change but if you keep it at a constant volume then the pressure of the reactant or the product gases that is not being affected the, the pressures are not changed and if the pressures are not changed the concentrations are not changed there would be no effect on equilibrium equilibrium is only affected when there is a change in the pressure of the reactant or the product and the noble gas is not it's neither the reactant nor a product it's just a visitor in the vessel it is as if you know uh, when i gave you the example of when i was telling you about these factors that it is as if there are people who are doing carrying out a work uh, some work like the equilibrium is like many people who are carrying out the work those people are the reactants and the products they are busy doing some work all of a sudden a child comes in and he's playing with a ball he's not harming them he's not disturbing them he's just busy with himself he's just playing and they carry on with their work undisturbed so an inert gas goes ignored as long as the volume of the vessel remains the same it would have no effect on the equilibrium so that is it for this video. If you found it useful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.